right, so welcome to the second part of um, this video series where I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be sharing with you a talk that I gave about how to use technology um, in your classroom and how I think about doing it as well. And to, this video is going to um, focus on critical digital pedagogy and how I define it. And so, um, you know, before I really go any further in terms of sharing examples with how I use technology and how I think about using technology in my classroom, I really want us to back up a bit and take a look at the bigger picture that I'm situating all of this in, which is critical digital pedagogy. Now, to understand what I mean when I use the term critical digital pedagogy, I want to first take a, take a look at the term critical pedagogy. From there, I will connect the term to digital pedagogy. How we teach and how we engage with our students matters. So under a critical pedagogical approach, we want to create experiences that allow students the opportunities to question and challenge dominant beliefs and practices. And I use the word opportunity, opportunity purposefully. We can work to create particular opportunities and experiences for our students, but then we have to let go. Ultimately, it is up to the students to decide how they will or will not engage in the experiences we present them with. Now, as students examine their ideas in our courses and discover the deeper questions and problems that reside within them, we want to engage them in experiences that will allow them to share their knowledge and shape society. So what we really want is we want their voices to be a part of the conversations that they are studying. Now, critical digital pedagogy takes the ideas of critical pedagogy and applies it within a digital context. Students have to become agents of and for their own learning. So thinking back to um, you know, the first video um, in this series, I showed you, um, you know, I showed you um, an example where the student emailed me about a broken link. And so I would argue in that example that she was not at the time an agent, a full agent of her own learning, right? Um, I was being positioned as the person in charge of learning and in charge of what was worth reading and learning from. However, what I was working towards in recreating my syllabus was to make a space where ideas about what we should read and discuss could have a place. Now, as I understand it and define it, critical digital pedagogy has six main elements. And I've got those listed here for you. So once you know the what and the why, of what you're teaching and once you've got a digital tool selected that will help you accomplish your what and your why, then you want to start thinking about how you can use that tool in a way in ways that align with these um, elements that I have listed here. And I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but I want to highlight this last one where the idea is you will look at how um, you're using the tool and simply ask yourself if how you have set everything up, does it maintain or change the status quo? And I want to ask a few, I want to make a few points here. So first, there's not always a right or wrong answer here. Maintaining the status quo can sometimes be fine. So if your answer is that it maintains, consider if you are okay with that. On the flip side, if you answer that it changes the status quo, consider what that means, which would include what it is you think you think things changed into and reflect on that, right? So if you change the status quo, what they change into, are you okay with that? And then finally, keep in mind that even if you've been engaged in a critical digital pedagogical approach for a while, it is usually disruptive for most students. For most students, these examples that I'm getting ready to show you in subsequent videos, um, they're not the norm, all right? So for me in my teaching, it's reached a point where um, it is my norm, it's my status quo, but it is in no way normal and it is often pretty disruptive for how most of my students are used to experiencing or doing school. All right, now, critical digital pedagogy, which I've abbreviated as CDP, is not a matter of identifying a technological tool and forcing it into your instruction. You can't say, for example, that you want to use Twitter in your classes and then magically make it work. First, it might not be appropriate for what you're trying to accomplish, and second, it's not just the tool itself, but it's how you use it. And I have up here for you three questions to ask yourself when thinking about how you use digital tools. First, you want to consider what it is you're trying to accomplish in general. What is it you want your students to learn or experience, or what kinds of opportunities are you trying to provide them with? 
And second, why are you doing these things? So once you know what it is you want to do in your class, think about the why. And both of these questions are usually divorced from digital tools. We're thinking about a bigger picture here. And then once you have that bigger picture down, then start thinking about if a digital tool would fit and help serve those needs, because that isn't always the case. Now, once we know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and have identified a digital tool, we are at the starting point of beginning to implement critical digital pedagogy. Because remember, a digital tool does not make your instruction align with a critical digital pedagogical approach. Now it becomes how we use the tool in our instruction and with our students. And for that, we are going to look at some examples. Um, and as we look at these examples, which is going to be in the third video following this one, um, as we start looking at these examples, start to consider how such an approach might manifest itself in your teaching. Keep in mind that adopting a critical digital pedagogical approach is not a neat and tidy experience. It can be messy. It also requires us to thoughtfully, mindfully use and not use tools and pay attention to how our decisions impact learning.